Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for having me today. It's really an honor to, to get the chance to, to join you all. This is my first WordPress campus conference, so I'm very delighted to be here. Um, so if those, if some of you are not familiar with Creative Commons, we are a small global nonprofit organization, distributed workforce. So I live in Mount Rainier, Maryland. And we are here because we believe in the equitable sharing of knowledge and culture in the public interest. So we're best known for, oh, thank you. Uh, we are best known for our global standard for open licenses that power millions of people's access to scientific information, to education, to data, to research, uh, and to culture worldwide. So we know of over uh, 2.5 billion CC licensed works online, and that's a, a relatively conservative estimate. And we are very much looking forward to chatting with you all about um, a couple secrets and then also ways that we can we can work with you. Okay, let me just get my clicker. Okay. So on behalf of CC, I'm here to divulge two secrets, albeit very well-known secrets already, but here we are. So the first secret is that there is an invisible infrastructure that underlies much of our knowledge and creativity today. We are all swimming in it, and yet we rarely, if ever, see it. And that's copyright. Copyright's the area of intellectual property law that governs our original expressions of creativity. Everything from the graphics you see in ads to the architectural plans underlying our houses and apartments to the essays you read to the lectures you offer the photos you scroll through to choreography paintings podcasts music everything is automatically under copyright we're swimming in copyright all the time. And how we share how people reuse our content is all subject to copyright infringement. So if you don't have the legal permission to share content such as an interesting research article, then you're technically breaking copyright law. So why am I telling you this? Well, because Creative Commons has an infrastructure hack for copyright. We have the CC licenses that are legal mechanisms meant to empower creators to share their work with downstream users in ways that are previously unheard of and impossible under traditional all rights reserved copyright. So traditional copyright law gives holders a capitalist monopoly over their creative outputs for a very long time. In the US, it's life of the author plus an additional 70 years after their death. In other countries, it's up to 100 years after the author's death. CC licenses are built on the premise that we often want to share our works. We want to share funny photos that we've taken with others. We want our, our videos to be repurposed and, and published online. We want our works to be seen in art galleries, but we also recognize that people want to share their works under certain terms. They might not want all of their work shared all the time in every way possible. So we have licenses to support creators in the ways that they want to share. With Creative Commons licenses, people, people are not just able to share their own work, but they're also able to legally access, adapt, and build on others' works as well for innovation, for new forms of creativity like this. All of our six licenses reserve the right to attribution. That means when you create something, you will always get credit for the work that you've done, no matter how it's repurposed. So we have six different licenses and beyond that commonality for attribution, people can choose if they want others to make adaptations of their work and if so, on what terms. We have two licenses, for example, that restrict downstream users from making profit off of the work that you make when you CC license your work. So six licenses, we have two public domain tools, which signify that the work that, that is um, represented is free from all copyright restrictions. So you can use it however you want. And we rely on this beautiful pool of creativity and knowledge in the public domain for so many of our innovations. So there are two public domain tools and six CC licenses, and I'll show you how to get to all of them in just a minute. So CC licensing is meant to enable more efficient collaboration, more efficient innovation and sharing. Here are a couple of examples. Researchers have applied CC licenses to their works to make uh, them more efficiently spread. So updates about COVID, updates about global challenges like climate change are more efficiently spread and shared around the world. Thanks to open efforts, including work in the public domain, 
we've been able to better detect breast cancer, see striking images from space, and address the spread of radiation from the Fukushima nuclear disaster, and even make strides with diseases like Parkinson's. You just have to look at the directory of open access journals or DOAJ to see examples of this research in climate change or COVID, or explore Flickr's video library uh, documenting footage of climate change, or explore projects like Climate GPT to witness the power of CC licensed open access resources and see the change that can be possible for our collective good. And as I'm sure you all know, CC licenses power another movement towards open knowledge, and that's an education. So we, we all know that the rising cost of textbooks in the US is a huge problem. Thanks to CC licenses, there are zero textbook cost degree programs or ZTCs, bed creds in Canada, that allow more students to access uh, open education and get degrees than ever before had access. So entire degree programs are built around this open free access to education but, but there are lots of other places where you can find open educational resources and other open resources as well there are repositories for cc licensed um, educational resources and and so on and i'm just going to scroll through a few but i mean you think of oer commons of mit open courseware the global digital library merlot you can also go to google advanced search and look for cc licensed content there as well tedx videos uh, PRJ, OER Africa, so many. I'm, this is not an exhaustive list, but I wanted to share a few. You can even go to Flickr and search by CC licensed content to, to find the, the images that you need. Okay, the second not so secret secret is WordPress and CC have had a long history together. WordPress is built on open source software, so it was already love at first sight for Creative Commons. But WordPress has made it incredibly easy for CC licensing WordPress sites. They serve as a wonderful model for platforms to draw from, to apply our infrastructure hack and empower creators with more choices to legally share their works. There are Creative Commons plugins to allow you to specify to users what users can and cannot do with your CC licensed content. There are also plugins to help you, or a plugin to help you uh, track the downloads of CC licensed content that um, that you want to share. And we're seeing this is really valuable for nonprofit news orgs that want to track how efficiently their news is spread that's CC licensed. So our hope is that more platforms can adopt this model, making it very easy for users to be able to legally share and spread their information using CC licenses. And last but not least, about five years ago, CC uh, started a, a startup project called CC Search, which was meant to be kind of like the, the front door to the internet for open licenses. So any, ideally any image that was CC licensed would show up under CC Search. So WordPress took over the project and made it even better. So they, um, they turned it into Openverse. On Openverse, you can search images, audio, and from my understanding at some point, video, um, based on the CC licenses or the topic that you want. Um, and, and use it as you like. So every image that you see in my presentation is found from Openverse, or it's a public domain image or GIF. Or GIF. Okay, so I wanted to leave you with a couple of notes. First, if you are interested in applying a CC license to your work, the best thing to do is go to our CC license chooser. Just Google CC license chooser. It'll be the, the first thing that you, you see from there. You just have to answer a few questions and that will determine which license best suits your needs. So if you want adaptations to be made from your work, it'll determine a license. If you don't, if you want others to be able to make commercial gain off of your work, just like you can, that'll yield a different option as well. So you answer the questions and then you can copy the code and put it in your web editor or copy the text and the icon and put it in your document and you've CC licensed your content. It's that easy. All of our licenses are technically dedicated to the public domain, so they will always be around, even if CC isn't. We want this to be something that everyone has access to always. All right. Finally, if you want to reach out to us, um, please do. I have my email here, but we also have the newsletter link to Creative Commons, our Creative Commons newsletter. We also have a 10-week online course about Creative Commons licenses, and the public domain and copyright and 
all of the um, the advocacy and open practices and so on that we are trying to foster in, um, in our global sharing commons. Um, but you don't have to take the 10 week course, you can just go to our page and get the free resources. So we would love to uh, to continue working with you or create uh, an additional training if, if that's of interest. Um, and our goal is to support these equitable sharing practices around the world. So if you're interested, I can't wait to, to work with you. So I'm going to just really quickly show you where you can find actually this. This is going to pull over. You can just click around this, this site down to our certificate resources and you can access all this information and more. All right, and that is it. Thank you so much.